Real Madrid taking on Manchester City. Uh, two other games for you on Wednesday, but these two really get the mouth watering. Real Madrid and City have got so much history, of course, going into this tie, given what's happened over the last couple of years. Of course, that extraordinary second leg win late, late on for Real Madrid in 2022. And then Manchester City got their revenge and then son, didn't they, last year with that 4-0 victory after a 1-1 draw at the Santiago Bernabeu. For more on this, oh, Mario Malkios with us, Frank Leboeuf. Uh, but I want to start off in Spain with Alex Kirkland. I suppose the big question going into this tie from a Real Madrid point of view, Alex, is have they improved enough from 12 months on from losing 4-0 against City in that second leg? Yeah, it's about learning the lessons of last year, of what went wrong last year, isn't it? It was really quite interesting listening to Carlo Ancelotti speak today. I went to his press conference about the Bebas, and he was pretty, pretty frank and pretty blunt, actually. He talked about the team lacking kind of courage, lacking personality in that second leg last year. And he said, look, that that won't happen again. He said, we've, we've learned from that. Now, it's easy to say that, of course. Another thing is to, is to put that into practice. But yeah, the big problem last year, as you say, was that second leg. The first leg, of course, last season, Real Madrid got a, got a draw at the Bernabeu, a decent result, not as good as they might have wanted. They would, of course, want to get a, a home win. But it was the second leg away from home where the team was really quite badly let down and they were shown up and it ended up being a little bit embarrassing for a team like Real Madrid to get beaten 4-0 in, in that kind of game. They're, they're not really used to it. Um, there's a feeling here, I think, of kind of nervous anticipation, you might say. There's a feeling this is about as, as big as it gets for Real Madrid and Manchester City in the Champions League. As you say, there's no novelty here whatsoever because we've played each other. Madrid and City have played each other year after year after year in the Champions League. Uh, recently, there's also there's always a little bit extra, a little bit of something special when Pep Guardiola comes here to Madrid. Because let's be honest, a lot of people here in Madrid, they hate him. They can't stand Pep Guardiola, and they've also had to watch their team get beaten quite badly by Pep Guardiola teams over the last ten or or fifteen years. So so many ingredients to this one. But yeah, this is the first leg. This is at the Bernabeu, so they've got to get through this before they even start thinking about learning the lessons from that second leg away from home last year. Yeah, and the second leg, which managed to see absolutely dominant, you, you could almost say, Frank, that 4-0 flattered Real Madrid. From a player's perspective, psychologically, does that play any part going into Tuesday's game? Of course, of course, you want a revenge, but you also know that uh, there's a threat coming up because of the talent of the, uh, the opponent. And, uh, and you know every aspect of the game and you, you're scared about not being at the top level that you want to reach in order to, uh, to cope with, uh, with the opponent that you are facing. So, yeah, they think about it. There they hope for, for something better. Yeah, I think they are better than, uh, than last year, uh, Real Madrid, and I think they know that. But still, there's still some question marks that they don't have an answer. They will have an answer already uh, next game, this week, and, uh, and uh, especially the second, uh, the second tie. But, yeah, they wonder a lot, I'm sure. Uh, the question not only, Mario, I suppose, is have Real Madrid improved from what happened 12 months ago? I suppose the other side of the coin is have Manchester City regressed? Yeah, that's going to be the biggest problem because also because of, you know, like we talk about Walker and, and Ake maybe not being part of that, that system. And when you play against a team like Real Madrid that has guys that can hit you on the break at the same level of speed and, and decisiveness, you understand, in uh, Vinicius and uh, Rodrigo, I think, I think when it comes to, you know, like, okay, in the middle of the park, we know, you know, but I'm, you know that that's like a normal thing that we expect him. And, of course, the ones that go to England is always very special. And eh? when you're already from England, you always want to show people uh, even more because you have some history with that team that you're playing against. But away from that, I am worried for City for the sides. I know people will say like, hey, it's possible, you know, we can talk about Akenji or we could talk about Lewis. Anybody that's going to play that system or that position, I mean, is going to have a difficulty because I think, you know, like Frank said, when you have history and something happened to you, you turn up and you will never forget what happened before, but you definitely want to clean stuff up. People complain and shout, oh, you know, it's the same big teams facing mm -hmm. off again. Who cares? This is brilliant. This is what we want to see, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. The, the best football clubs in, in, in Europe, if not the world, facing off. 
you could make an argument for almost anybody left in, in, in this last eight as, as being deserving to be in the final. And it'll be a good final, regardless of, of, of who those clubs may be. But for this one, I, I think there's so much at stake because of the history, because of last season in particular. And while, yes, you can absolutely make the argument that Real Madrid are better 12 months on, though without a Karim Benzema, they, they may be a little bit more unpredictable. I think without question, Man City themselves have regressed. But Pep Guardiola will come into this one with a, with, with a plan. And albeit in, in years gone by, that plan has, well, certainly the plan around Vinicius Jr. has involved Kyle Walker to a significant degree. He's not available, so we believe at, at this point, for the first leg. I think the pressure comes for Real Madrid in what we saw last season, feeling that they have to win this tie at the Bernabeu, mm -hmm. given the turnaround um, at the Etihad. And, and with that brings an additional pressure. And, and not just win, but you've got to give yourself a couple of goals to, to defend. So that brings an additional pressure. Um, and, and, and tactically, again, I'm, I'm keen to see, because while season's gone by, you, you pair up with, you pair up with, with Benzema and, and a, a, a fairly orthodox front three, uh, Real Madrid has been anything but this time around. I expect there'll be a plan to... To, 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 deal, um, to, to deal with Bellingham, I'm just not sure what Man City have mm. to cope with Vinicius and his pace. Uh, Alex, latest on Militao? It would be a different story. Of course, he made his comeback in the last game against Athletic Bilbao, having been out since August. If he'd have played half an hour against Athletic or even 20, 25 minutes, that would be one thing. He played for a minute. He came on in the 92nd minute of that game and played for literally a minute and touched the ball a couple of times. Can you go from that to starting against Manchester City in a Champions League quarter-final? I don't think so. Would he have a part to play in this tie? Yes, uh, probably at some stage coming off the bench or in the second leg. But starting in, in this first leg, I just can't see it. In fact, the big question that was being put to to Carlo Ancelotti today, being put to Antonio Rudiger, who spoke to the press as well today about the Bebas, was about who partners Rudiger. And the answer wasn't Militao. The answer was, is it going to be Nacho or is it going to be Chuameni? Rudiger was asked about this, asked if he, if he had any preference. Of course, he's not going to say he's got a preference. He did actually come up with a stat. He said he'd been told that him and Chuameni together haven't lost as a pairing. So that's a pretty good omen. But yeah, no one here is really talking about Militao having a realistic chance, certainly not of starting this first leg. And the roof's going to be closed and everyone's going to be wearing white. Real Madrid making a real effort, which in the past they haven't felt they needed to do, Alex, because they're Real Madrid. Yeah, I mean, I think the atmosphere will be fantastic because the Bernabeu on a, on a big Champions League game, it, it always is. I'm not sure how much difference the, the roof being closed makes, but it does make it a little, a little bit noisier, I think. I don't think it has that, that does add a little something to, uh, to the atmosphere. Uh, like Chaka said, Madrid will feel they've got to win this first leg and not just win it, but probably win it by, by a couple of goals to give them a little bit of a, of a cushion. Um, the big selection dilemma for Ancelotti, like I say, is at the back. Does Chua many play at centre-back or in, in midfield? In terms of the main men, I agree that Vinicius Jr. is the one to, to watch. Of course, we were talking all about Jude Bellingham in the first half of this season. In the second half of the season, it's been all about Vinicius Jr. He's been in sensational form. You've got that issue with uh, no Carl Walker, who's the, the only one really who can live with Vinicius in terms of his pace and, and his strength. Um, so that, that's one to watch. The other questions for Ancelotti, will he be tempted to pick an extra midfielder? Because I think when you're playing against Manchester City, the temptation is always to pick a, a fourth midfielder. Does that mean, is there room for Vinicius and Rodrigo and Bellingham, for example, as a kind of front three? Or does someone like Rodrigo drop out and go to the bench and you pick an extra man in midfield, someone like Camavinga? So uh, one or two big questions for Ancelotti to, um, to answer. He was asked about this today. He said, look, I'm not going to invent anything. I'm not going to do anything weird with the starting eleven. He said, you can predict the starting eleven, and you'll pretty much get it right. OK, let's see if anyone's going to get their predictions right. Uh, let's see who everyone has gone for uh, looking ahead to those two legs. Every single person, with the exception of Mario, has gone for Real Madrid to advance ahead. Of Manchester. Everyone's gone for Manchester City. Everyone pretty much thinks it's going to be tight. Stevie, myself, Shaka, Frank to draw. Uh, Robbo and Alex have gone for City to win narrowly in the first leg and then advance. Craig was playing golf, so didn't have time, obviously, to give out his <laughs> prediction. Uh, Mario, come on then, Real Madrid. You know, like, look, I, I, I understand, you understand, because City is, uh, of course, the, the team that we all talk about in, in, in the up. But also, when you look at the games, you understand, over the weekend, OK, he rested some players, uh, you know, the game before, and then, uh, you know, the previous game, he brought the, the Bruyne back and, and Haaland. But 
Haaland, you understand, I, the interesting part, when I saw him playing against Arsenal, for example, you know, Gabriel and uh, Saliba, they did a great job, you know, physically and the way they played him. And I feel like when he faces Rudiger, it will be an interesting battle again, um, in the sense of like, if it's, sometimes when he goes face to face with people, they don't have the, the, the higher fear that normally go against them because, you know, everybody almost has it. But the ones who don't have it, they are willing to go with him toe to toe. And I feel like this might be the guy again that Rudiger is going toe to toe, regardless if he's that good. But he might just go ahead. And having said that, I still feel in Madrid, they, they, I don't know, guys, I'm so sorry. But Madrid is just maybe the team that I just like and would like to see to go forward. You don't have to apologise, Mario, for hating Manchester City. That's fine. <laughs> That's the way you see it. That's the way it's going to go. That's, no, it, uh, <laughs> it's much appreciated. <laughs> Alex, given what happened last hate, year... Hate is a big word. Hate is a big well, word, Sam. Well, it, it, so you oh, were using bigger words done, before we never. came on air about Manchester City. That was a lot worse. Uh, Alex, meanwhile, uh, for Real Madrid, because what happened last year, is this a little bit of a free hit? I, I don't think it is when it comes to Real Madrid ever in the Champions League. I think the pressure is always there. The expectation is always there. Certainly here, whoever they're up against, people expect Real Madrid to win, even if it's Manchester City. I, I wouldn't see it as a, as a free hit. But talking about Rudiger, that's the, the other big battle to watch. It's Rudiger versus Haaland. Rudy was asked about this today, and he literally said, it's personal. Not in the sense that he's got a grudge against Haaland, but as he said, it's me against him. It's one-on-one. -on -one. You know, me as a defender against him, as I think he called Haaland a, a, a super striker. And remember last season, Rudiger started the first leg, did a really good job on Haaland, got really tight, mm. was literally rugby tackling him at times, and then didn't get picked for the second leg. Ancelotti left Rudiger out of that second leg, and look what happened. Madrid lost 4-0. Lost um, so I agree that's the other key battle for sure is Rudiger against Haaland. Uh, Frank, can you, can you kind of relate to that? In which way? In like, in as a centre-back, you pick that battle and you make it personal. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody has to do that in order to win against, you know, you know, you know that you have your own opponents and uh, you have to deal with it. And uh, it's true that the, if Allen cannot cope with uh, Rudiger's rage on Tuesday, uh, everything is possible because he will show to his teammates that uh, he's furious, that he want to do something special and they're going to follow. We go, we, we, if Nachos is next to him or Chouamini is next to him, they're going to they're gonna go for it. And that's, that's what leaders uh, can do, and uh, it's why they, they, they can't big time, you know, in those games. Somebody has to show the way to maybe a miracle. Oh, uh, thank you very much to Alex. Much appreciated. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow. And, of course, La Liga is back this weekend. It took a break because of the Copa del Rey final. Uh, but it returns on Friday with Real Betis taking on uh, Celta Vigo. Saturday, it's an early start for Atletico Madrid to take on Girona. The late game on Saturday is Cadiz against Barca. But before that, Mallorca, of course, the Copa del Rey runners-up play host to Real Madrid. All those games live on ESPN+.